that's that's just not gonna work. Howdy. So we got a lot of great feedback on our dry pour concrete form. However, I think there's still some experimenting that we need to do. My first video, I poured it in dry, but then I mixed it. Next video, I poured it in completely dry, all the way to the top, and then we cut it open, and we saw what happened. This experiment, we're gonna pour four to six inches, and then we're gonna add some water. So four to six inches looks something like this. Pour four to six inches, add some water, and no mixing. Then we'll add another four to six inches, add a little bit more water. Remember, one bag of concrete takes two and a half quarts of water. So, we're gonna be adding a small amount of water between each of the layers. We'll see how the concrete does. All right, let's get to it. I'm using 60 pounds high strength concrete mix from Sacre. That's good enough for a base. Let's go ahead and add some water. I'm setting on the shower setting. Should be enough for the first layer. So before we go on, let's go ahead and tap the outside of it to see if we can settle any of the voids. All right, it's off to bag number two. So as we tap on the outside, you can see the concrete is starting to settle to make a flat surface. Because there's lots of bubbling, that could also mean that it's channeling and not getting towards any of the concrete. This means that it could leave some of the voids that we saw in one of the previous projects. Now, we're gonna go ahead and cut it open. And what we're looking for is we don't have any stratification of the layers. And if we do, how weak are they when those layers are joining? Holy smokes. Looking at this initially, it does not look good, right? So we have this giant hole over here and it's super crumbly. One thing that stands out is the stratification. You see large rocks, thin sediment. Large rocks, thin, thin material. And something I just noticed is that we have a huge pocket of dry concrete. Look at that, it's just powder. From right here, I think this is a bust. Dry pouring in layers, is not gonna fix your situation. But I'm curious, let's cut the rest out. Maybe it looks a little bit different down here. I'm not very hopeful, but we gotta do it. So here's a closer look at the dry pour concrete pier. For this variation of doing dry pour, it's a no-go, right? Just putting in a little bit of concrete, adding water, and then adding some more is not gonna do it. So I excavated this dry spot right here, and it's about two inches into the pier itself. This is trash. Now if you look at the rest of this, it's a mess. There's all these pockets, there's dry spots, and there's even large voids. That's definitely gonna weaken your concrete if you're actually using this for a pier or for a foundation. You need to mix it. Absolutely mix it. I guess my dreams of doing a dry pour concrete pier for my cabin are not gonna happen. Because there's so much stratification, I'm pretty sure I could probably lift it and something will separate. Let's try it. There's the top. Didn't have to try hard on that one. And go figure, looks like there's a whole layer that did not get wet at all. Here comes my favorite part of this project, using the 16 pound sledgehammer. <laughs> Golly, that's a huge hammer. 16 pounds. Right, you can't layer it. If you layer it, you're gonna stratify all these large rocks. The large material is gonna come to the top, just like your Cheerios. And then the smaller material is gonna go to those lower layers. Don't do this, do not layer it. When I did dry pour this way, I didn't know it was gonna actually turn out so terrible. Honestly, this is not gonna work out. So, I'm glad we did this. This is gonna tell us a definite, do not layer your dry pour. Do not layer your concrete without mixing it. If you have any ideas on future variations of experiments with concrete or anything else that you'd like for us to try out, shoot me a comment, let me know how we can do it, and uh, maybe we'll incorporate it in a future video. Thanks for watching.